Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Some of my friends requested me to talk about the importance of good company, the importance of good friends. And it's a very important topic, but before I say anything, I want to share with you the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as we continue through this talk over the next few nights, inshallah, this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the central idea that inshallah I will try to get across. <coughs> so I want all of you to remember this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we continue our discussion. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-mar'u ala deeni khalilihi. A person depends upon the faith of his friend. A person's religion, a person's faith depends upon the religion of his friend. فَلْيَنظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ So watch out each one of you who you make friends with. Watch out. Let me say it again one more time. Prophet said, watch out each one of you who you make friends with. In other words, it doesn't matter if you are religious or not, if you are righteous or not, if you are knowledgeable or not, if you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five times a day or not, if you know the whole Quran by heart or not, if you are an Imam or not, if you are a Da'i or not, your downfall will not necessarily come from you. It will come from whom? Your friend. This is a very powerful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in this hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is giving us an advice. And this advice has nothing to do with worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This advice has nothing to do with you spending your time learning about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The essential advice in this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is who you make friends with. And by the way, this is one of the central, one of the core things in our religion, who you make friends with. One of the core things in our religion. Let me give you a small example. I won't give you a wrong reminder tonight, inshallah. It will be really small. Let me give you this example. Six, seven years ago, I was in Dundee. And I was studying in Dundee. In Dundee Central Mosque, I met this brother, African-American brother. He was doing his PhD in petroleum engineering in University of Dundee. And he told me that he had been in jail a few times. He had been arrested for trying to rob, for drugs, for things like that. And it just so happened that one of his friends, one of his childhood friends is a Muslim. And he was not in touch with that friend. And by the way, this guy that I'm talking about, he was a recent convert. <clears throat> he said, one of my friends happened to be a Muslim. <clears throat> and after being getting into trouble for so many times, I didn't have any place to live. Everyone kicked me out of his house. So I called up this Muslim friend of mine. After a very, very long time, I was not in touch with him, but I didn't have any else, any, any play, any else place to stay. So I called up my friend, Muslim friend, and I asked him, can, can I hang out with you for a few days? Can I stay over with you for a few days? And he agreed. So he said, I stayed over with him for a few days. And as I spent time with him, I got to introduce how this friend of mine lived his life of Islam. And when I got to introduce to his life, I became Muslim. I took a shahada. When I met him in Dundee, he was in Dundee at that time, six years ago. At least I know a dozen people who became Muslim because of him in Dundee. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, all Allah did for him is one thing. Guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot guide whoever you want to guide. I cannot guide whoever I want to guide. Guidance is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah only opened one door for him. That brought him to Islam. And not only that brought him to Islam, he becomes a means of guidance for so many other people. And that one door that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened for him was a door to his friend. That's it. Just because of his friend, he became a Muslim. And now he becomes a da'i and he is, so many other people are becoming Muslim because of him. So the thing that I want to share with all of you, the thing that I want to talk about with all of you, is something that I've never talked about before. 
So I sincerely pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah helps me and guides me. And I will be able to help you understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to tell us about this concept, concept of friendship in the Quran. There are different kinds of friends that are mentioned in the Quran. Quran talks about the subject matter of friendship. And then Quran gives different terms to different kinds of friends. There are almost more or less 10 different terms that are used in the Quran. Number one, Qareen. Khazul, Wali, Siddiq, Khalil, Hamim, Aqdan, Walija, Sahib, many different terms. And I don't expect you to memorize all of them. And if I start telling you about each and every single one of them, probably you won't be able to remember any one of them. So what I will do with you, inshallah, what I will share with all of you is that I will only tell you about two kinds of friends that are mentioned in the Quran. And Quran says these are the closest friends that you can have. I'm not telling you if they are good friends or bad friends. Quran is not talking about if these friends are good friends or bad friends, no. But Quran says these two friends are the closest friends that you can have in your life. One of them is Khalil and the second of them is Rafiq. Please keep these two terms in your mind. Khalil and Rafiq. These two terms that are mentioned in the Quran, these are the most two beautiful describing friendship terms that are mentioned in the Quran. Khalil and Rafiq. And inshallah over the next few, few nights, we are going to talk about these two kinds of friends and how they impact our religion. And how they impact how we look at life and how we take our religion. Inshallah. One last thing that I want to share with you, and inshallah then I'm done, is that we are in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, and this is a reminder for me and for all of you. This is a message for me, first of all for me, and for all of you. In these last 10 nights, if we can give charity every single night, and by the way, when I say charity, I don't mean Iqra Academy. I don't mean you should give charity to Iqra Academy, and I don't mean that you should give charity 10,000 pounds every year, or every, every night. When I say charity, it can be one pound. It can be one penny, but give some charity every single night in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And you know why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because one of these nights is Laylatul Qadr. And if you give one pound charity in one of these nights, and that night happened to be the night of Laylatul Qadr, then what will happen? It will be like you are giving one pound every single day for 83 years. You will get the reward of giving one pound charity every single day for 83 years. So I suggest myself and all of you, if we all can give charity in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And also, I know some of you brothers, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And brothers, wallahi, I love you. And I love you from the core of my heart. And whenever I share some kind of advices for you, I, I take it for myself first, and then I share it with all of you. Last night when we spoke about the, the, the Taravi prayers and how important it is for us to spend at least one portion of the night worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And I gave some encouragement, uh, some, some encouraged words. Alhamdulillah, a lot of brothers, they stayed and they finished their Taravi prayers and they stayed with us. And Alhamdulillah, I was able to fulfill my promise. And I finished Taravi prayers at half 12. Me and Abdul Baha, we finished Taravi prayers at half 12. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> one other thing that I want to suggest to all of you. If you cannot stay for 20 rakat taravi prayers, and you have to leave after 8 because you have some job, you have some commitments, your children are waiting for you at home, so you have to be at home 12 o'clock. If you cannot read 20 rakat full taravi prayers, then at least make some effort to come here for Fajr Namaz. You're already here for Isha Salah, right? Alhamdulillah. You're already here for Isha Salah, you're going to pray, and you have already prayed Isha Salah with Jamaat. Make some effort, Make some time. If you cannot spend the entire time or 20 Rakatarabi prayers here, you cannot read it with the Imam, then at least make some time, make some effort, and come here for Fajr Salah. Why I'm telling you this? Because Prophet Wasallam said, if you read Isha Salah with Jama'ah in a mosque, and then you read Fajr Salah in a, uh, in a mosque with the Jama'at, you will get the reward of the entire night. And like I said before, one of these nights is Laylatul Qadr. So why would you miss out that opportunity? of being counted, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the entire night when you know that one of these nights is the night of Laylatul Qadr. So if you cannot pray eight rakat taravi prayers, at least make some time and come and join us for Fajr Namaz. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadat and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding.